I will be presenting on quantum computing. First up, I have a few words on quantum mechanics. Quantum refers to the smallest possible discrete unit of a physical property. Quantum mechanics, sometimes quantum theory, is the branch of physics that deals with how particles behave on the atomic and subatomic levels. At this quantum level, many normal laws of mechanics do not apply. So what is quantum computing? Well, it is called quantum computing because it relies on quantum mechanics to process information. Normal computers use silicon-based chips, while quantum computers use quantum systems like ions, atoms, electrons, and photons. The most central quantum properties used are superposition, quantum measurement, and entanglement. I will explain those in more detail next. So first up is superposition. When in superposition, quantum particles are a combination of all the possible states at once. This means there is a probability that the particle is in each possible state. A particle will remain in superposition until it is measured. A common visualization of this is the coin scenario. A coin is either heads or tails normally. But when in superposition, it is both heads and tails at the same time. Schrodinger's cat is, a, is also about superposition, but it presents it as more of a paradox. Related to superposition, there is quantum measurement. When a quantum particle is measured, it must become one of its states. It is in that state and nothing in between. This is referred to as collapsing because it collapses the superposition state. For example, if a quantum particle is in superposition of 0 and 1, it collapses to 0 or 1 like a binary bit. One of the stranger properties is entanglement. Entanglement is the ability of quantum particles to correlate measurement results with one another. It allows for two or more particles to become entangled, forming a system. When one particle in the system is measured and collapses, all particles in the system collapse. Therefore, a measurement from one particle can draw conclusions about the others in the system. Also, entanglement can last over very large distances, even over light years. The next topic I am planning to cover is on qubits and what they are. A qubit is the basic unit of information for quantum computing. Normal computers use binary bits that are either 0 or 1. Qubits serve a similar role to binary bits. The major difference is that a qubit can hold a superposition of all possible states. So if the possible states are 0 and 1, a binary bit could be 0 or 1, not both. A qubit can be both 0 and 1 at the same time. This just begins the changes in architecture with quantum computing. Next up is quantum interference and interference filters. Quantum interference is the probability that a qubit has for collapsing to each state. An interference filter can change the probability of going to a state. The name interference filter comes from how the filter interferes with the normal state probabilities. This is where the power of quantum computing comes from. There are actually more than one type of quantum computer architectures. I have currently been explaining the quantum circuit model, which I will continue to explain after the slide. I've just listed a few of them. Um, the, the quantum circuit model is what's normally implemented today. Now to combine everything I have previously discussed. The nice thing about the quantum circuit model is that it was designed to replicate how modern computers work. When a collection of qubits are entangled, it is called a quantum register. A quantum register in superposition can hold all possible answers to a computation. For a small illustration where two binary bits can be the binary number 0 to 3, 
a 2-bit quantum register holds 0 to 3 at once. Using an interference filter on the quantum register and then collapsing it can produce the desired result. Or answer. Quantum gates are like very complex interference filters that work on small quantum registers. All quantum gates are reversible, including the classical logic gates. So that's and, or, nor, not, those are the classical logic gates. A simple explanation of this is that the number of qubits out equals the number of qubits in so that, you know, they can go in both directions. A quantum computation is comparable to a program. It uses a sequence of quantum gates to set quantum registers to solve a problem. There are many applications for quantum computers. Some applications are more suited because the time complexity for quantum computations that solve the same problems as standard algorithms are significantly faster, but this is not always the case. The first use I will talk about is for quantum simulation. Quantum computers work extremely well for modeling other quantum systems because they are based on the same or similar quantum phenomena. Some examples that can be modeled are complex molecules and photosynthesis. The next use is cryptography. Many encryption algorithms work, of, work off of very hard to reverse mathematical functions. Many of those functions can be reversed using quantum computers. I think this is absolutely terrifying because it could reconstruct private keys from having public keys. The next use is machine learning. This one's pretty straightforward. It is faster to train and simulate a situation for machine learning on a quantum computer. This is one of the main areas that is still being explored and has a lot of focus on it right now. The final use I will discuss is searching. One of the first theoretical uses for quantum computers was for searching databases. The nature of superposition allows for the time complexity for algorithms to be decreased. There are other applications, but these are the big ones that I found. There are currently efforts to make quantum computing more accessible. The main strategy for this is cloud quantum computing. In 2016, IBM connected a small quantum computer to the cloud that allows some simple quantum computation programs to be ran. This marked the start of cloud, computing, cloud quantum computing. The IBM machine is one of the few actual cloud quantum computers. Today, there are quite a few quantum emulators and simulators that are available on the cloud. These are mostly used to teach and learn how to write quantum computations. They are made in preparation for real quantum computer integration. Here are my sources. I used a lot of the Microsoft Azure quantum pages. I just cited the main one that links to all the others.